Looking at Quadrant now as, how are they playing this game type? You know, what are they doing differently to blow teams out that we're not? And how do we combat against that? And I know they've been out in America, they've been boot camping, quite rightly so, trying to get the practice in before this event. And just looking at some of the scores, I know that Quadrant maybe didn't have the greatest setup, so I'm not trying to take too much away from it, but you know, there was a couple of scores in those Stronghold games that were a lot closer. And I think there was a few losses in there as well. So teams are certainly looking at how Quadrant approached that game type and what they can do to combat that play style. Oh, it's so much to take away. You have, no, as you say, there's no doubt that every team within the top 16 minimum should be watching Quadrant Stronghold's game types and trying to figure out what on earth is this team doing that no one has done in this game yet, right? That's what Quadrant has been up to. As we take back a look at the Sentinels on the left side of your screen, talking a little bit more about them, I think one question you and I still have, even with this new lineup of these four players, is really where is the responsibility of play calls, right? An open question. I think we're thinking largely it, it can and maybe should be lethal in terms of what he's able to do. Uh, vocally, we heard him, I think, most notably during the listen-ins at Charlotte. He sounded really confident in his play calling. And you have to think he's probably the one they're going to look to in these games as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's somewhat of a new role for him as well, I would say. Usually TJ's a great communicator, one of the best in the game but he's not the person who's going to be saying, hey, let's do this right now, let's make this play. And I think he kind of naturally looking at his progression in his career, it seems like a role that would fit on this roster, especially with the teammates he has alongside him. But for now, it looks like we're almost ready to get back into game number one and kick this tournament off, Andy. Like we said, it's going to be odd ball on streets, and it's a fascinating game type to start between these two squads. It really will be now as we are officially into game number one here, and the tournament is kicked off. The HCS Arlington Major Hosted by Optic Gaming, we already have a loud crowd in the building, which will only get louder. Also, a sold-out crowd here in Arlington, Texas. So happy to be here. So happy to be underway with our first series. Feel like the season really is underway now in Halo Infinite. Last event just a month or so ago, and we're straight back into even more action. And off the rip here, it's going to be four dead. You can imagine as Chick lines one up onto Lethal. Quadrant with a hot start here. Control of Rockets and the Oddball, and a full setup here back at. Very nicely done there from Chick. Not easy to do. Thought about maybe the back whack instead. He goes for the splash damage off of the tires. It will lead to the first 14 points on the board for the side of Quadrant. And the A-hold will continue for just a second, but these next picks at Cafe will determine if the break happens. The first kill does come in for Sen. Yeah, good damage came in from SLG, though, and that's going to slow things down. Looks like Quadrant made the decision to try and play that ball and trying to just lay out a little bit. And I think one thing that was a conversation that we were talking about post-event, we caught up with SLG a little bit after what was the breakout performance from Quadrant is as good as they are, it's still a very inexperienced roster. They haven't been in these big matches too often. They haven't played the best in the world on a consistent basis. And he was saying maybe that was something that showed, especially in those tight game fives at the end of series. I took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say game fives are really what we had our eye on in terms of what happened at Dallas. Some good damage coming in there from Boo Boo. One dead for each side. The next kills will, however, go to Quadrant. They just picked up two as well. Lethal going to get some trades. So 1v1 on the map at the moment. Chick versus Lethal. Good grenades coming in from Chick, and he's going to grab that odd ball away, knowing that he's done the damage. The score is 23 to 7 at the moment, so not too much between the two teams. But you have to say the Quadrant have certainly been in the ascendancy at the start of this game. Yeah, really impressive Quadrant here off the opening. Just like you said, that 1v1 was a really great representation of how they've been playing the game type so far. They're knowing that they don't need to force these kills. Good movement, though, from Lethal to sneak under a few shots as he'll get into back A and maybe just slow things down for just a bit. They will take down two and important timing here with the Rockets up. Yeah, Chink's going to have a 1v1 here. Really poor kill. Falcati comes in to give a little bit of assistance here to Lethal. And the, re the, I the idea of why this is such an important round of kills, not only the Oddball, but the Rockets just dropped as well. Good cover fire coming in here. Seeker will be able to wow. take down the Rocket player. So one Rocket still to be used by either Quadrant or Sentinels left inside of tires. Interesting there. I think that Rocket does go. Yeah, it will be Chick with a trade there with Foul. So the Rockets will be out. But really interesting timing there because I was really impressed with what we saw from Sentinels with the three dead just before the rockets popped. To be honest, though, it took them a minute to actually get the rockets in the end. However, even though those rockets will just be traded out, we will see a lead change here as Sentinels will take the lead now, 30 to 23. Quadrant should be able to get into Tram here, though. You saw that stick being picked up and Spartan being taken down. And the odd ball will now be played. Chick picks up a couple, and now Spartan left on his own. He's the first spawner as well. So pretty much every single player here from Sentinels isn't past the 50-yard line of the map. That's going to mean ball time here for Quadrant. It's in the hands of Legend. And you can see Seeker, he's set up on the commando. Yeah, back and forth between these two. Lead change will happen yet again. Quadrant will eke out a few more points. Good damage from Seeker. However, the push comes in. It's a nicely timed Sentinels push. Two dead for Quadrant. Ball has to be played off of trash. Yeah, Chick just trying to stay alive here. Make sure that, that ball is going to be pressured and that he's going to be able to do damage wow. on his way to the grave. He does so. 
But, like you say, the break has come in successfully here from Sentinels. 39 points to 38. Sentinels in control of the odd ball, eking out a little bit of a lead here in round number one, but so tight between the two teams. Really interesting to talk about that break. You actually had C the players on Quadrant there, and Sika just drop. Ooh, good shots there from Spartan in the end. Two dead for your for Sentinels momentarily. That will be three dead, a minor man advantage for Quadrant. But an interesting break there. I think there was maybe an opportunity for Quadrant to not allow that gap when he dropped off a trash. Everyone had already flown in from Tram, so you could tell the timing was just a bit off for Quadrant. Yeah, interesting to see how both teams are trying to break each other. It is a patience game. Everyone trying to get numbers on the map before they try and formulate a push. Legend taken down here means that Quadrant will have two players in the death screen, and not for the first time, the kills timed perfectly. Rockets picked up again here by Lethal. That's going to be Quadrant 3 dead and a Rocket in the hands here for Set. That's right. That's not just 2 for 2 on Rocket Pops as the lead now extends all the way to 70 to 38, but also the second Rocket grab was even more impressive than the first. The timing was great. Lethal's now able to hit from downtown as well. The crowd likes what they see. That Rocket comes from Cafe and Quadrant pays the price. They still have 2 dead. It's very good slaying control here from Sentinels. Yeah, you're going to have to see uh, Quadrant just slow down for a second here. They maybe have a chance at one one more push before the first round goes into the hands of Sentinels. Quadrant still with Chick in the death screen as well, so you can see Seeker's trying to buy some time. He's trying to allow his teammates to get back on the map, but there's Spartan. He's on the flank through the tram at the moment, and I tell you what, if they get these kills, this might be the first round going to Sentinels. Wow, what a great way to watch that round from Lethal's POV there at the end, convincing Halo. And you might think Lethal is well into his redemption arc story here as he's just playing great Halo month after month. Every time we see him on the main stage, we are more and more impressed with what we've seen from him here as he's now deep into year two of Halo Infinite. But I love that play from him at the end, right? Just holding it down, not letting anyone come through Cafe and make sure that the damage was done. They will take that first round. Are you looking at the team chemistry? We were talking about it for Sentinels, right? On paper, it looks like this team will work. The parts are there, everyone is comfortable in their roles. And you're looking at, you know, the stats that we're seeing from that first round, and it, it kind of summarizes it, right? Spartan and Falcate, they're the guys who are going to be cleaning up damage. Lethal, by the way, spawning with rockets, it seems, at the moment, tries to thread the needle to pick up a second, but they're leading the way in kills. Boo Boo, he had all the ball time, so his kills aren't too impactful, but Lethal there supporting all of his teammates as well. It just seems to be working. However, Quadrant, they strike pretty true at the start of this round, even though it's a slender lead for Sentinels, Quadrant had them four dead. Falcate eventually taken down in the balk. That will actually continue the spawn staggered. So this next push from Sentinels, they need to be very careful. Boo Boo with some very important and good shots off the heaven. Oy, 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 almost sneaks out a ridiculous double. In the end, he will be taken down. Much to the relief of the other side. Now it will be two dead here for the side of Sentinels. I mean, Chick's playing some really good Halo in this, uh, in this game so far. He's 14 and 10 for the rest of his teammates. Get that slide pretty heavily at the moment. You can see the SLG is, uh, is struggling a little bit. He's in the neck. They need a 20 point run, and in 20 seconds, they also have to focus on these rockets. Let's not forget what happened last round. Largely the real reason that they lost the round, failing to get either of those big rocket grabs. But they, let's see what they could do here with 14 seconds left. First kill goes down, second kill goes down as well, and it's Sentinels players who are falling. That's going to be three of them in the death screen. This should be a rocket grab here for the likes of SLG and Quadrant, if they can maybe hold off the respawners coming in. Maybe the timing wasn't perfect there. Just enough time for Sentinels to get back on the map after those kills. Boo Boo's going to be challenging. SLG gets the help from Legend. But where are the rockets? It looks like Spawn wow. has managed to get away with them. Oh, boy. Somehow Boo Boo's staying alive on caution and creates enough distraction over on rail that it allows them to get the rockets on the side of Sentinels. Pretty unacceptable on the side of Quadrant. You can see one rocket is going to get damaged, but no kill. 51 to 14 is the score at the moment in this game, so Quadrant certainly answering back, but one rocket already expended, and it hasn't turned into ball time here for Sentinels. Yeah, really nice job here from Sentinels to steal the rockets, however, rockets. as you say, and the second rocket doesn't hit either. I'm not sure if it went all the way. I don't, couldn't tell you. Maybe it went all the way through the map there. Is it just going to eventually not connect into Tramp? However, the ball's going to be down here at the bottom of the L. Still a lot of time on the board during that whole hold, as you say. I mean, let's talk about Quadrant for a second there. They don't get the rockets, but they pick up kills surrounding it. They bait the odd ball as well to expend another rocket. Then they get two rockets fired at them. No kills picked up for Sentinels, and it means ball time here for Quadrant. So 
being able to negotiate a situation yeah. where you do not have a power weapon is as impactful oh. as having it yourself as Seeker. I mean, he's got a band in his hand and it's all headshots for him. Like you said, really well done and not easy to manage the situation as well as they did. That will be three dead for Quadrant, but Quadrant does get the ball tossed into the courtyard. Let's see how long Chick can stay alive. Chick trying to do what he can. He's got a oh. bulldog and my goodness, that shot! But Boo Boo sticks him in the guts and that's going to be enough to take him down. Big stick. Let's see if they can get the ball here. Still two dead. This should be a comfortable ball grab. They will easily escort this back up the tramp stairs. Three dead for Quadrant at the moment. SLG was your last player alive. Now is it going to try to make this push happen with Chick? Rockets in 20 once again. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. Quadrant have done a really good job of keeping the pressure on. Damage being taken by multiple players here from Sentinels. But Quadrant with a significant advantage as two players fall for Sentinels. Booby knows he's got to play that ball. He's got to try and survive. But here's Seeker to fly in and make sure that he is not a problem. Nice job here from Sika, as you say. Gets up the tramp stairs right away and wins a very, very key battle on the balcony. We'll see if he can stay alive. He's getting pinched here, but somehow gets away with it. He will stay alive in the back of tramp. Two of his teammates have fallen, though, and it's time to see if my son can do something else in this game. Falke is going to go away with the oddball, though, and he's got the rockets. Trade comes in, though, and all of a sudden, Quadrant, who are on the precipice of tying this game up, well, they found the game's got a little bit messy here. Let's see what they could do. A lot of time left. 224, 70 to 25. And as you allude to, very far from over. Still need a lot to see a one to two very convincing holds here from Quadrant to close it out. Yeah, and this is where Quadrant are going to be tested, right? We were saying experience maybe not something which is on their side, but big veteran plays from the one player who has been involved in big series throughout his career is going to come in from SLG. He grabs that up ball, and now 20 points is all Quadrant need to tie this game up. Boo Boo was your last player alive yet again. He's going to wait for spawners, but on the staggered kills come in. Another two dead for Sentinels. This could be the round right here. Yeah, Rockets picked up as well. Bulldog in the hands, and yeah, have to wonder, are they going to oh. think about slaves? The answer is yes. SLG! He picks up one legend, steals the other away, but it's still going to be a quadrant kill, and surely now they close this round out. SLG, the one who has to get all the kills and also has to toss the ball in as well. The man is doing it all. We'll toss it into the tram. This should be the final hold. Yeah, you would think so, especially with legend picking up the kill onto Spartan. It's one desperate push, but the pumps are coming in from SLG. He finds one with the bulldog, and that will be the game. Tied up at one to one, we have a deciding round to see who takes game one. And how about it? We wouldn't ask for it any other way, like father, like son. He's, so proud he's of him. looking so good. Proud of he's him. looking good on the main stage here in our second round. And as you say, a game deciding round three to take game number one. I can't believe you've never picked up on my French accent before. It's, it's strange to me that you never mentioned it. But Seeker is going to start off the game well. But Rockets do get picked up by Boo Boo, who manages to get one on his way down to the death screen. Three dead for Sentinels, though. And you have to say off the opening break, again, it looks like Quadrant have an advantage. An advantage. Let's see. Ooh, should be an extra kill here. Yes, for Seeker as well. He's going to pick that one up and now rotate over to Cafe, see what damage he can do here. I'll tell you what, that spike oh, is perfectly boy. placed. He gets one, he challenges another. Seeker doing it all at the moment. Damage output is where you need it to be as Cheek scrapes away, squeezes the cheeks and gets around that corner. Wow, very good Cheek squeeze indeed. The rocket splash damage will come in on the caution. Look at the kills from oh, SLG! Yes. He SLG! G. Reds the needle, perfect timing from SLG. Beautiful stuff, but the double is exchanged immediately here by Falcated, who manages to keep the pressure on to Quadrant. Now you're seeing the pace of this game really start to pick up here. It's the first game of the freaking tournament and already we're seeing these teams going back and forth. Yeah, this is wild. As you said, things have definitely kicked up in terms of the pacing and the intensity on the main stage. I think neither team, after how hard they've worked for their respective rounds, wants to drop this game number one. Oh, it's going to be three dead here for Sentinels. One just came off of the respawn. Oddball picked up and rotated back towards spawners here from Legend. Now, he's usually the man who's picking up all the kills for this squad, but he knows sometimes you've got to get your hands dirty. That's right there. Picks up another one here. We'll see what he can do on rails. Gets the assist. Another one in the form of Boo Boo at Music. However, still two dead. Booby just having to play defensively here, but the flank's going to come in from SLG. He picks up one, Seeker picks up another, and essentially that's a four dead situation for Sentinels. Control of the map, control of the oddball here for Quadrant. Another trade from SLG is going to slow Send down once more. You got to think Quadrant has to have the feeling right now on their side of the main stage that this is their game. They're right now outslaying in total 83 to 68. Rockets coming up, though. That's going to be an important moment in the game, as we always talk about how influential the power weapons can be. Spartan being set up with that red gun inside, however, of the tram is going to be a problem here for Quadrant. One kill picked up, one rocket left here for Booby to try and break through. Ooh, it's a good rocket, but also Chick answers it there, though, to keep it all tied up in terms of the kills. Legend, your last player alive momentarily for Quadrant.
Legend thinking about a challenge, thinking about buying his time, and somehow Legend has managed to wow. evade the attentions of Sentinels here as the last player alive. Gets his shields back as well, and I tell you what, there's one player you don't want to do that to, it's Legend, because he can come back to bite you. There's one kill coming in from him, 2v2 on the map. See what happens here at Laundry, a big battle. Spartan very comfortably wins that for the double. Can't get the ball out of tires, though, and up and in, so the ball will sit on Laundry. It was 2v2 at the moment. SLG just trying to survive, trying to be a nuisance. Knows those spawns have just come in, in and around PD in an arcade for Sentinels. Ball is down as well, so everyone just playing for kills at the moment. Trying to see if they can create some space on the map to move that all ball away. And you can tell things are getting nervy here, right? Things are slowing down just a bit, a little bit more tactical play, as neither team wants to be the one making that mistake. Seek is still the lone player down on the map. Well, things oh. get a little bit messy and wacky. At the bottom of the tower, three dead legend is your last player alive yet again for Quadrant. I mean, Sexos did so well there. They were trapped inside a PD for so long, but survived, just kept outputting damage and managed to keep Quadrant, most importantly, off of that oddball. It's 37 to 21 in the favor of the French squad at this point in the game, but it is just a matter of seconds separating them in this final round. They, as I said earlier, they've got to be thinking that they should be up even more here. Now outslaying 96 to 81 here. This needs to be their game. It would be a heartbreaking defeat if they didn't close this out. Oh, there's Legend working with Chick as well, doubling up, lovely little bit of baiting and switching coming in from them, and Quadrant have map control once more. 10 seconds until the Rockets come up. Sentinels on the back foot. Three of them fell there. Can Quadrant hold? This really could be, ooh, the deciding moment. Look at Legend just taking his time here. Going to try to time the team shot here from back A as well. Rockets now popping. This pushes everything oh here in this goodness. game. Quadrant are timing it well. Spartan gets away with the Rockets, but the oddball is in the hands here of Quadrant. Spartan's last alive. He uses one. Wow. He gets one kill. Almost gets traded out. Can he use the second successfully? SLG going to be challenging. Dropple doesn't do enough. And Quadrant keeps Sentinels at bay. I think a lot of us were wondering when that drop wall was going to come down there because he could easily maybe toss that bottom A to try to win that battle. In the end, the drop wall comes out late. So Quadrant will now hold the back of A. They will also hold Courtyard. 65 to 21 with two minutes left on the clock. Quadrant control the pace of this game right now. They have a 40 point advantage. They can play safe. They play for kills. They don't have to force the objective. Sentinels, on the other hand, it's starting to get a little bit yeah. nervy now. One minute 50 left in this round. Let's see how Quadrant plays this. Are they going to be the aggressors here or just play a little bit of clock? They've got triple their opponent's points at this point. And we know they can play both ways. They can play aggressive. They can fly as they've done all game. However, they might try to play this a little bit more cautious to trade out. Great play from both sides here. Three dead for Sentinels for the moment. It's a one-man advantage at this second for Quadrant. Oh! Legend can't get away with the ball, though. That's a big, big effort coming in from Spartan. Spartan's got the red gun as well. He's got that stalker. Can he chip away at some more shields? A big... Big push coming in in this game now from Sentinels. They need to get the kills. They need to break onto Quadrant. And if they can do so, then maybe there's a chance for them to get back into the game. But the trades are coming through. It's a 1v1 one between Legend and Falcated. Let's see what happens here. This might decide where the next hold goes. Legend! Good shots from Legend there to win it. Big, big win coming in from Legend. Respawn's coming in on PD though. Ball still down. 25 seconds until the Rockets come up as well. Wow, what a big win there. That's a big 1v1 from Legend. You might not have seen where that ball would have gone. It could be a very different final minute of play. It's still 65 to 21. And to answer the question, Quadrant is playing that slaying control. They are indeed, but game's still on a knife edge. Reason I say that, if the ball gets picked up here by Sentinels and they get those Rockets, 40 points is not a significant lead, but a shroud screen is certainly going to help. Rockets are certainly going to help here, and the Legend having them and picking oh! up two, and coming out of it still breathing means that Quadrant surely are in position to win this round. Unbelievable timing, unbelievable rocket placement as well. 24 seconds left. That's a big double from Legend here. 20 seconds on the clock. Stay off the oddball. That's all he's thinking right now. It's a killing spree at the perfect time. 15 seconds left in this game. Falcated, he wants a bit of it as well, but Legend is holding strong. With the numbers, they should still be good. As you said, just holding this ball. They just now need to hold Cafe. Five seconds left. Love this play as well coming in from Legend. He knows the attention's going to be there. He refocuses. He does damage. But where is Chicken all of this? Where is the rest of Quadrant? They're looking at a victory screen as they win on ball on streets. Two rounds to one. Wow, what a comeback here from Quadrant. In the end, they outslay Sentinels one. 117 to 97, a dominating Slayer performance in those last final moments of play. What a series of events. As we said, not sure if Quadrant was going to just hold down the foot on the gas pedal. Instead, they went 100% slaying control, and they played it perfectly. They certainly did. I mean, we mentioned experience, right? Do Quadrant do that last event? Difficult to say. Obviously, you know, we didn't watch every single game from their POV, but 
you would imagine that that's a lesson that's been learned. We have an advantage. We have a lead. The odd ball is almost an extra player for us in this situation. Yeah. And that game management from Quadrant, that's an experienced play call, probably coming in from that man in your screen. And also, we were on SLG's point of view at Cafe. You might have noticed the ball was sitting in the back of Cafe, way past the Bulldog, and it also reset. They perfectly timed the reset, so the ball, as you said, do not touch the ball. Don't even try to rotate it. Let that ball reset. It actually reset back to the Audible spawn, and you might have seen on the death screen, Lethal grabbed it with less than one second left, and the grab didn't actually come in on time. So every little piece of that final hold at Cafe was perfectly executed. It guarantees them the win. And to be honest, on the Sentinel side of the state, that's tough. After you take the first round, probably thinking they should have managed to squeeze it out in two rounds. Instead, they will fall and now be one game down. Yeah, very interesting to see how uh, the series does progress from there. Because we were saying, you know, oh, ball streets, quadrant, not the best game type, but they steal it away from Sentinels. And now we move over to Slayer Live Fire. Now, all the talk coming into the last event was you need to practice Slayers. Yeah. It was proven. And it was kind of, you know, exclamation point put on it by some of the tweets we saw coming out from players saying, hey, we need to be better at Slayers if we yeah. want to win a tournament. Bound being one of those players on SSG. But for now, I mean, it's it's interesting because it's live fire, which is a game type where Quadrant have been pretty damn good. If you put them on Stronghold, you put them on King of the Hill, usually live fire is a, a, a ground they do extremely well on. But the fact that this is a Slayer game type and everyone has now refocused and put more time into those Slayers, could be a massive game. If Quadrant take this, they're on the precipice of a 3-0. It really could. Also, let's keep in mind that Quadrant showed just how good they are in that last game of playing very fast, slowing the game down exactly when they want to, when they need to. Early on, we saw really good control in terms of the Rockets coming in from Sentinels. However, in the end, it's Quadrant that slowly but surely really gets the upper hand, the advantage throughout the rest of the rounds that we saw. And Slayer is going to afford them that same opportunity for them to be able to slow the game down when they need to, especially on a map like Live. You could say it's really the least dynamic of the maps where you could slow the game down more than any other Slayer. We'll see if Quadrant could do the same here in game number two. <laughs> does look a little bit like me, doesn't it? Does it does look a lot like you. If I squint, it's, I, it's, I, it is you. Don't do something I don't remember. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about the Slayer that we got coming up as well, because like I mentioned, a huge opportunity here for Quadrant to go two up in this series. And you know, if they can do that, and we talked about how much of a marker series this is going to be for either side of the stage, either Sentinels or Quadrant, then all of a sudden, you know, everyone's taking Quadrant seriously at this event yeah. at this point. You know, they are seen as a top contender for all teams. And I think if you go two and up against Sentinels, then even though everyone's aware of how good Quadrant are, it's another example of just how good they are. This isn't a team that is going to you know, force you know, a 3-1, a 3-2, a good series against some of the best in the world. It's a team who can beat anyone. Yeah, they absolutely can. And I think one thing, that, as you said, Quadrant, I think a lot of people rightfully have their eyes on, and you heard it from the desk as well. Quadrant is now in the conversation, especially after 3 0 Optic Gaming at the last event. Quadrant is now well into the conversation of, wait a second, can this team win an event this year? And now I think everyone's thinking, well, after 3 and going Optic, you have to say yes. But what I like about their story here this weekend is they've got to do the hard work first, right? They, they cannot look at, ooh, what is Championship Sunday going to look like for us? Can we get top four, even top three? That can't be the conversation in the Quadrant camp. They need to make sure they're playing these series with all the heart that they have, securing top six once again, and then and only then can they look at even better. And I think uh, I spoke to SOG, they were warming up over the last couple of days here in the, uh, in the arena, and he was, uh, I said to him, oh, you've got a tough pool, haven't you? And he was like, yeah, but we want to play the best teams in pool play because that means for the rest of the bracket, we know what to expect. Yeah. That's going to be where our level of game needs to be in order to go on and win an event. So I think it's perfect mentality, and it's something that I've always talked about with this Quadrant lineup in comparison to some other European teams we've seen through the years. The, the mentality isn't, oh, let's try and get top eight. Let's try and get top six, go home and, you know, with a smile on our face, break a record. It's, what's the point in being here if we're not going to try and win this thing? And I think that is something that is just installed through a combination of, you know, SLG and his experience and his drive as a player, but also that new blood coming through and the fearlessness yeah. of Seek and Legend. Absolutely. Nothing to lose this team. I think they have continued to look better and better. At DreamHack Dallas, we saw what I think many would agree was the most conclusive run from a European team in history. And as you say, it used to be a very different story for European teams. And you could just say international teams overall coming onto North American soil. It used to be, can they beat the record of the last international team from their region? That was always the goal. However, 
in the Quadrant camp at the Quadrant organization. It's a very different story there looking here for the not just the best performance of a European team, but they have their eyes set on a championship. However, to get there, they need to make sure, as you say, that their pool's performances are top tier. Well, now we need to see Sentinel's answer back as well, because how the, the feeling of this series on our main stage could change in just a few moments' time. After this game is done, if the series is one-to-one, -one, all of a sudden the eyebrow gets raised again. It's like, hey, this Sentinel's roster is looking pretty damn good as well. So this, uh, this series certainly still on a knife edge. Game number one, it was two rounds to one. It was still very, very close. And Slayer, you expect this to come maybe down to five or so kills. Absolutely. We expect this to be a very close one. And as we said, this Slayer here specifically will really determine what direction this series goes. I think a lot of people thought Sentinels was going to take that game number one. Overshield shining bright on your screen. It certainly is. And how many games have we seen decided by that Overshield here on Live Fire as well? It has to be the focus of attention for teams. It's about making the play just before it as well. Are you able to do damage? Maybe hit a little flank onto a play. If, you know, all of these things that come in, it's about taking risks as well as hitting your shots. But game number two is underway here on our main stage. Quadrant one up in the series, looking to make it two. Yeah, we'll see if Sentinels can bounce back here, keep things interesting, or can Quadrant keep up the momentum that they had in those last two rounds? It's a clean and easy grab from Legend on your screen. And last game, of course, leading the game in kills. He looked pretty good. We'll see if he can continue where he left off. A lot of responsibility in the shoulders of Legend right now. As you see, the Overshield has just popped onto the map. Booby picking up one, but this line of sight that Legend has, he knows there's going to be Sentinels try players trying to make plays onto him. Misses one, hits the second body onto Boo. He will be out the game for a few seconds. Spawn, he's going to lose his shields as well. Where's the rest of Quadrant, though, to clean up this damage? Uh, there's one, there's there two. There all comes in. Look at the kill feed lighting it up. You teed him up perfectly, Mark. And that's a clean, clean grab. Look at the patience. This is what I'm talking about from Quadrant. He sits top tower. The kills and the damage, they didn't come in right away. However, in the end, they do. It gives them now a 7-5 to five lead and your first OV grab. And now you see SLG holding forward and Legend holding faces in his hands. The Overshield doing so much damage. Gets out of his life here, SLG, for just a few moments. Legend trying to keep him alive as well, holding that big door. Seeker now back on the map, back in the kill feed as well. And Sentinel's trap, but I have to say, holding pretty well. Here. They really did. Chick eventually was coming around as well. Now here comes the rest of the push. This is wave two of the push. And guess what? Sentinels are going to just dip, duck, and dive out of their bottom mid. But they get caught here on the key door as two more kills will come in. Now it's 12 to 6 from Quadrant. Sentinels did whatever they could to fight off that overshield push. However, in the end, it's perfectly timed with Quadrant. And Legend wants to keep the pressure on as well. You can see the... He's trying to damage the respawners. He's trying to make sure that when his teammates come into the fight that they've got a little bit of a health advantage. And Legend is holding forwards at the moment. SLG cleans up one. Two members here for Boo Boo. Had to hit the shots and just about did as the overshield comes up. Oh, that's a big kill there. Three dead. Chick is your last player alive for Quadrant. Now on paper, this should easily be a grab here for Sentinels as the game gets much closer. Once again, now just a three kill game and an overshield grab here for Sentinels. Things just got a lot more interesting. They certainly did indeed. Sentinels, that was vital for them, not just for the, the state of the game and the kills, but also for momentum in the game. If another Overshield gets picked up by Quadrant, that lead almost becomes insurmountable, right? But now, Sentinels have a way back into this game and Lethal hitting some great shots here as all of a sudden, it's become a two kill game. Wow, what was just 12 to six, as you say, is now just 16 to 14. And SLG somehow sneaks that out without a trade, so that will now bring the game. Once quickly as I say that, though, right back to two kills, 17-15 now. Booby picking out that kill on Legend does make it a little bit closer. Heat Wave going to be controlled here by Spartan as well. Yeah. Repulse is up to the tower. He's going to have some great POVs to look at and get all of the information from where Quadrant are rotating as the sniper rifle is about to pop as well. Nine minutes left here on the clock. Plenty of time to play with. Things slow down just a bit as well here. Spartan's going to sit top tower and watch for this next sniper to pop up. Top minute is available. Quadrant at the moment trapped in and around A. So he can try to make some moves out on the overshield side just to get a little bit of distractions and damage down. But Falcate getting the first kill maybe is going to open up the opportunity here for a pickup for Sentinels. However, it looks like Quadrant have stolen that away, and they're all the way back into A. Just like that here, 17 to 17, all knotted up. And look at this angle here from Spartan. He picks up the first one. That will be two dead, three dead here for Quadrant, and now a lead change here for Sentinels. It's a perfect time to get into a listening here with the Sentinel side. <laughs> Yeah, he's screens now, screens now, guys. 15 OV, 15 OV. Yeah, screen, screen, screen. Yeah. I got him. Nice. nice. I mean, I mean, I can play. 10 seconds OV, check smoke, check smoke. Yeah, it's up, it's up. Screens right now, screens right now. Screens, I'm inside, they're going to grab him right now. Just smoke it, just smoke it. They're looking at me, you can get it, you can get it. Nice, we got it, we got it. They have sniper, they have sniper. 
Alright, right, Obi's out. Oh, two more on it, two more. Another one, keys. One try keys, one try keys to bottom mid. Still keys, I got one. Nice, nice. three dead, three dead. No, I think it was small, I think it was small. I'm on back, two back A, two back A on Desi. One could be big door. Really big jail. In A, in A, one try. Keep trick. Big one try, big one try. Alright, slow down. Keep trick. One more jail, one more jail. The red zone, you ran bottom. I'm coming to my game. Turn on the bottom. Big door, big door, big door. Big door again, big door again. I'm trying to go push. I'm watching the door. still sniping. Stay. He's weak sniping, weak sniping jail, one shot. I'm putting a plat. A plat. I'm coming. I'm coming, Jesse. He's Keto or one shot. Keto or one shot. He's one. I'm looking at two and A, two and A. All right, I might, I might be. Try to live, try to live. All right, where you guys where? I have your big watch. A plat, A plat. Throw him, Mike. Throw him, Mike. Come on, Keto. Keto, Keto. I'm coming over here. Cut, cut, Mike. Coming over. Okay, still me, still me. On me, scoreboard and one A. Scoreboard and top A plat, A plat. Shot cuts. The room, the room. Yeah. One shot on TJ. Yeah, you're by yourself. I'm on a tower on Jesse. Green, green. I can watch your push. I'm sitting in. Come in, in, come in. We need to get towers on the flat week. I'm on a tower, bomb tower now. Top bottom and top tower. One speak, bomb tower. Really weak. 45 for everything. Three tower on Jesse. Two shots, I shot in top tower. Two in double, back one. Double one, back one. They're going, I'm going dummy, so Mike. And top mid. Yeah, I'm top mid. I'm top mid. I'm top mid. Tires to dummy, Jaren. Tires to dummy. OV in 35. I'm mid. I got one. One more, one more. He wins up. He's on me, dummies. He's on me, dummies. Yeah, he's killer. Weak, 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 weak pillar door. And dummy door. And dummy door. Both weak pillar door. Yep. I got one. Nice dummy door. Yeah, yeah one. Shot. pillar's weak, Mike. No, no. Was well, the game he slowed down for a few moments and we jump back into the comms? It's a three kill different make it a four kill difference as Quadrant go back into a lead here. Yeah, somehow Sentinels hold on here as they keep the game within five. Just moments ago, it was about a six kill deficit that they found themselves on the receiving end of how now however now in the home stretch here a five kill now making three kills as two kills go the way of sentinels things are going to go down to the wire here in game two and you could tell just both oh. teams fighting for their lives oh, it's a double OG. maybe can you make no. it three no he can't falcated wins the big big pivotal battle on the tower but the damage being cleaned up by slg there as his teammates fell around him has opened the door here for quadrant look at this play from chick he flies forward he doesn't care about the death he takes one with him and he allows seeker to get the overshield now for quadrant look at chick the bodyguard dives in front of the bullet so it's a clean grab here from Sika. helps with another one there's more around the corner it's going to be in the form of falcated nowhere oh. to hide when that overshield is in play. Now 41 to 37. This is your home stretch in game number two. Seeker says, come here, boy. I want another kill for the tally. And he picks it up. And now with Falcate in front of him, he hits three, he hits wow. four. Fifth will do the damage. The rest of Sentinels now trapped in the back of tower. This man is wild just flying back here. He wants even more. Not done yet. Look at all the damage coming in. Finally, lethal. he's taken down. Three dead here for Quadrant. Three kills the difference between the two teams and Legends trying to keep the pressure on. However, recognizes the game situation, buys enough time for Quadra to get on the map, wow. and now he's back in the game. Booby Boo might be his second victim. He finds two, it's still a four kill difference. Very important kills there. You saw Spartan also have the sniper down on Nesbridge. We'll have to see how much ammo was left in that rifle and if it ends up in anyone else's hands as well. Now a four kill lead here. Seek up, make a little flank on bottom middle. Lethal, shield's taken down, Spartan. Wow. Shield's taken down as well, and Seeker with this play might be be able to pick up two. Lethal goes to the skies, but comes crashing back down in the death screen as it's two kills now to go for Quadrant. What a run there from Seeker. Look at the angles that he takes. Still, he's just shooting, dealing damage, and not taking any damage in return. Boo Boo might not be able to get away here. Still, just two kills remaining. Boo Boo does get away. Somehow, Falcate gets one as well. Boo Boo's still alive as well with that green gun. Overshield coming up, even though it's just two kills to go here for oh. Quadrant. Two kills being picked up by Sentinels with the overshield popping as well. We've still got a game on our hands here. They're trying to go rat tunnel. Rat tunnel gets pinched. Just a two kill game. All down to this final overshield pop here. Look at this flank though. Falcate it spots it out though. He gets the information. Boo Boo, he's there as well. Spartan with a big win. It's a one kill game. 49 now for Quadrant. They just need one. They double team the overshield to shut it down here. 49, 47, now 49, 48! No trade! Seeker has to survive! Falcon at 49, 49! Boo Boo wins it! No way! Oh my god! Down to the wire! And you see on your screen SLG's reaction! He can't believe it! Sentinel steals the game! They were down 48 to 42! An unbelievable comeback! Boo Boo wins it, and I'm pretty sure it was a battle! where both players were down to no shield because we saw it from the third person perspective. Boo Boo in that fight, no shields, just flashing away. One bullet would have been enough, but he connects with the shot that mattered to make the series one to one on our main stage. Oh my word. Cannot wait to see the final moments of that game wow. on replay.
It was an unbelievable series of events. It looked like it was clear sailing. Boo Boo staying alive from back tower to bottom middle to key door was an unbelievable sequence of events. As we take a look at some highlights from that game, an unbelievable game number two, 50-49 to tie the series one to one. I mean, you summed it up perfectly. The, the sequence that won the game was Quadrant not getting the clean on to Boo Boo, right? If they take him down, He's not in a position to win that game. It's as simple as that, and they have the numbers advantage, but Boo Boo survived. Quadrant hesitant to push that kill, knowing everyone else was coming back on the map. But look at the score. I mean, 48 to 44, was that? 48 to 42. 48 to wow. 42 what a in favor of Quadrant. So much credit due on the Sentinels' side of the stage. Of course, Coach Chig in the back as well, keeping that team in the game mentally, without a doubt. To win that game, 50 to 49. And we'll have to take a look at the highlights later, especially of the final moments, just because Boo Boo, like we said, staying alive and somehow that team not giving up, making sure they don't trade where they don't need to. It led to the overshield grab. Quadrant did well to shut down the overshield to an extent in Rat Tunnel, but there, the trades that needed to come in did not come in for Quadrant. A 50 to 49, one of the biggest comebacks we've seen on the main stage, honestly, in quite some time. Might even be of the season here so far in your game number two. Wow, I mean, first series of the day, and it is not disappointing whatsoever. It's 1-1, 50-49, game number two, and now we move on to streets once more, but this time, it's strongholds, Andy. And what needs to be said, right? We talked about Quadrant's numbers and strongholds so far. Now, it's worth noting that stronghold streets might be the weakest of their stronghold suite, however, is still, still pretty good. It's still very, very good. So maybe an opportunity for Sentinels to just take away a few more digs at the Quadrant armor in terms of the Stronghold's game type. However, the bigger concern for me, to be honest right now, Quadrant, one of the most dominant uh, game type performances we've ever seen in history, as we said, with Strongholds. Right now, I'm worried about the momentum oh, yeah. on the main stage. Oh, because yeah. when, we, when we ended that game on SLG's POV, he couldn't believe it. When we cut to Sika, and he's looking at the stats, it looked like he was still in game, right? He, I think he was trying to figure out how on earth that might have played out that way, blowing what was a six kill lead at the end of the game. And now the momentum lies firmly on the Sentinel side of the stage. And isn't it crazy how after game number one, we were talking about the calmness, the ex a little bit of experience maybe being picked up by Quadrant and how they closed out that final round. Well, now you're seeing the opposite side of that, the complete capitulation in those final moments of game number two. It's a game they shouldn't lose from that position. It's a game you can't lose can't. from those positions if you want to be considered a tournament contender but now they have the opportunity to bounce back. But at the same time, like you say, Sentinel's now going to be riding high. And we always talk about how important games are, moments in games. Well, first few minutes of this game is vital, in my opinion, to how this series ends up turning out. It really is, without a doubt. And one thing I'm really surprised by is Quadrant, as we said before the game started, they're doing so well with determining when you hold forward and when you slow the game down. They didn't get that kill on Boo Boo bottom middle. He gets away key door. What happens? Three players or so bottom mid Quadrant get caught. That brings the game now within three, and they really get caught in, in an in-between state, right? Were they pushing there or were they not pushing? On the gameplay alone, it was hard to tell. And that play call, the mistake of the play call, excuse me, is rare to see from Quadrant. And they need to find the strong mentals here in this stronghold streets to make sure they get right back in this series because, as you said, that's a result you cannot allow to happen. Yeah, 100%. Well, they've got to get it out of their minds and they've got to think about the next one. I'm sure that Sentinels will be loud in every single fight that they're going to take in the first moments of this game though because one thing that you can do with Quadrant you can put pressure on them and they can certainly we have seen it in some of the EU qualifiers as well a little bit of pressure onto Quadrant and all of a sudden you could see you could say some cracks start to appear so for Sentinels the opening strategy in this the early hold could be what determines the series yeah absolutely I think as you say there's now so much riding on this and you could tell that this series was just building as it went right that first round went one way we get a big comeback there with back-to-back -back rounds from the side of Quadrant a 50-49 game two you can't ask for much more and now you feel like things are getting even dicier and dicier with a lot more pressure coming onto them as the game continues on, as the series continues on. I mean, we always say it, right? Halo Infinite has now become a game of inches. It's a game of one kill. It's a game of surviving for a few seconds. And you've seen the perfect example of it in that game number two. But now we see how Halo Infinite becomes a mental game, how the teams react, how they come into the next game. And 
you know, how it kind of progresses, how they want to approach the next game. I feel like Sentinels, like, honestly, Spartan, we saw him starting to bark a little bit there, right, at the end of that game. He wins the first 1v1 battle against any member of this Quadrant lineup. He is going to get loud, and Quadrant are going to know they're in a fight here. Without a doubt. And I think one thing I was really impressed also with the side of Sentinels during that listening was things were not really uh, hype, if you will, during that, right? Not it hectic. Not totally. hectic. And I would even say that if, for a moment I was wondering, is this too low energy? But I think what we saw in Charlotte as well when we went to the Sentinels listenings, when you talk about how lethal comms typically are. I like what we heard there. It was really under control. And I think a lot of people, myself included in the first moments, might have mistaken that for, ooh, is the energy a little off here? But I think instead, they were so execution focused, and God did it ever show in the end of that game, that instead, that's where their kind of communication level lies. And as we saw, it works for them because they somehow pull a six kill comeback to win that game 50 to 49. Yeah, an absolutely crazy comeback. And I'm pretty sure that we won't see many better no. throughout the tournament as we do progress over the next few days. But, I mean, it, it's something that Quadrant are going to have to learn from, and they're going to have to learn from very, very quickly if they are going to be considered as someone who could go on and maybe force their way into a grand final. Yeah, we talked about their game five specifically, but I think the same could be said for that game, right? When you, look at, when you look at that game two, Slayer, of course, going to be the same game type that you would see in a game five. And I think right there they have to ask a lot of questions because I, I tell you what, if Quadrant gets that moment back, I think also especially with hindsight being 2020, I think if they think about that moment again and they had 100 more opportunities to play that, they probably win it 99 times because I think if they realize, hmm, they got away key door, but we're still four alive and they're four alive, right? We are even four up on the map. Overshield's about to pop. How should we play this? I, I, right. I don't think that they, exactly, play for the Overshield and you're gonna win. Yeah. You're gonna trade two for two at some point during that Overshield grab unless things go horribly wrong. Instead, they drop down bottom middle, they put themselves in a really difficult situation with a high disadvantage and they allow the comeback to happen. And it goes back to a conversation we were having between the event that we just had and the one we're in now is, you know, we felt like some teams in the Slayers were trying to finish the game too quickly yes. it's not a time-based game right you can wait for an opportunity to to present itself and maybe quadrant fell into that trap a little bit themselves there, trying to finish the game as quickly as possible instead of just waiting for the moment to close but for now we're tied up a one to one everyone it's time to get into map number three and as we said it's just been a great great start to the not just a series but an incredible start to the tournament here we thank you for hanging out with us at the hcs arlington major hosted by optic gaming from downtown the rocket will not connect as it's going to be three dead off the break for both sides. It was a 1v1 momentarily for SLG and Falcon. Yeah, Falcon is going to move towards B and should be able to convert this one pretty comfortably. Knowing he's got a rocket as well, we can just eat a couple of grenades. And this will be early scoring going to Sentinels. And this is going to put pressure now onto Quadrant. Sentinels know they smell blood in the water, I think, here in this series. And they want to try and really, really squeeze Quadrant. Absolutely. They're going to capitalize. And I think they're also veteran players on the side of the Sentinels roster. They know that once you get a 50-49 like that, that is the opportunity to strike, as you say blood in the water. Well, for now, concentration comes in from Quadrant on A. SLG with a big win, but Spawn is going to be in and around the vicinity alongside Boo Boo Doobie to make sure that A is still in the control of Sentinels for now. Seeker, though, good damage coming in from him, but I tell you what, that's a landmine being land down. Laid down, excuse me, by Boo Boo Doobie. It's absolutely nuked there. And uh, speaking of a nuke, it's also a very convincing scoreline off the open. Three dead for Quadrant, while the score also ticks to 40 to 0 off of the AB hold from Sentinels. Oh, big win. Big win from Legend there on Cafe. Yeah, really important because if Booby wins that, then Quadrant once again massively on the back foot. But Legend creates an opening at least for them to get back onto the map. However, it's a 53 point without answer start here for Sentinels. It's been a great start for them and they're looking to push the triple cap as well. Spartan with really nice timing on the route there. He sees a player going C stairs. So he goes front C, almost gets away with the AR kill as well. However, that will now lead to the first points on the board for Quadrant. Quadrant trying to stay alive here. Seeker working alongside Chick to pick up a couple of kills, but it will be a momentary flip of control over to Quadrant, but that's going to be stopped almost immediately. You can see the Oscar with the reset now comes in after Seeker wins his individual battle over at C. So Bubu now trying to pressure onto C. It looks like Sentinels have made the play call that we want to try and take C back. E, nice shots there from Boo Boo Doobie. Picks up a double kill. That will lead to a very nice and clean rocket grab from Lethal. He has to take his own life. In the end, that will be a trade. One rocket will be down on the laundry. But the game is now much, much closer here. Let's not forget, this was about a 40-point lead here from Sentinels moments ago. And now, just like that, Quadrant not only staying neck and neck in Slays, they're only down 18 to 16 in Slays, now also only down by 20 points. And we're continually learning, right, about this Quadrant lineup, you know, mentally. What have they got in their hands? What have they got in between their ears? Are they able to withstand pressure? And it looks like at the moment, they're close enough in this game to say that the hot start from Sentinels has just been cooled down for a few moments. Booby's gonna try and move on on B, but there's already two players here, and he gets taken down. Now look at this, take a look at the score. 
as it ticks up here, Quadrant right back, not only in the game, but back in the lead. 60 now to 58 on the board, and they will continue scoring as there were two dead for both sides momentarily. What a comeback here. As we said, they were down by 40 or so, and now it's Quadrant's turn to put a comeback on the board. They've done just that. SLG picks up a kill onto Falcate. That means he's going to be able to control A, you would say, but off the respawn, all of a sudden, it looks like that's not going to be the case. Seeker slows down the conversion of C, but it should be up to Chick, you would imagine, on the other side of the map from what we're seeing to convert A back into the hands of Quadrant to keep them scoring. But the battle is over at B. Multiple numbers from both teams trying to fight, trying to scrap for control. Boop was the first one to fall in this battle here. Here comes the push. This needs to pay off because two dead. Lethal needs oh, to get the kill. He Seeker does gets both, which leads to a four dead here. Quadrant will continue scoring, and here comes the first triple cap of the game. And let me tell you, this is a scary moment here for Sentinels. Two still in the death screen, now back on the map. But the triple cap, when Quadrant have it, they are so damn good at prioritizing what they have to do. They will continue to score, and after a 50-point answer start coming in from Sentinels, now you're seeing 100 points to 59, Quadrant taking control. Yeah, 100-plus point run here, unanswered so far from Quadrant. A might eventually flip, it does, but still a BC hold, and still man advantage now, still going to be two dead. Quadrant is now firmly in the driver's seat. Spartan going to be taken down, no shields as well, but confidence coming in from Sparty to pick the kill up. However, speaking of pickups, it's going to be Rockets being picked up here and somehow avoiding the grenades is legend. He's just like a ghost sometimes. The way that he moves around the map, he's just one of those annoying people who never seems to die. Loves a little tiptoe in there. Like you said, just perfectly dives around those grenades. And now look at the scoreboard. God, did it ever get out of hand. If you're Sentinels, you're thinking, Remember when we were up by 48, now down 150 to 59? Masterclass here from Legend and Seeker together. And a masterclass from Legend in where we need to be on the map, right? I want to take a second to actually talk about that decision. It looks so simple. He sees two players. He's like, I, I could challenge, I could fight here. But he knows that the, the play call coming in from Quadrant is we're playing for A. Let them spawn there. They're going to spawn red. You can have a 1v3, 1v4, and they convert. A off the back of it, they keep control, and now they move in. Now they rotate, and this is why they're so damn good at this game time. And beautiful pressure there as well. They started to pressure C, C wasn't working out, and guess what? They shrouded. Sentinels puts a shroud screen down, they say, perfect, we'll go ahead, and now we'll flip B. And now, once again, still getting presence on C as well, even with two dead. Well, we'll see how uh, Sentinels try and get out of this chokehold that Quadrant have on them at the moment. Chick does some damage onto Lethal and plays his life. B seems to be the hold that they want to make sure they're keeping hold of before they try and make a play onto C. But here's Lethal up on top of the trash cans. He claps Chick for a few seconds and puts him in the death screen. Spartan picks up another. Quadrant two dead. And finally, Sentinels finding a semblance of control and numbers on the map. As you say, two dead still here for Quadrant. It might be three dead in a moment there. Lethal gets a trade, and it's a good trade in the back of Tram. Triple cap now in effect for Sentinels. It's now their turn to go on a run. We'll see if they can continue it. Two dead, though, for both sides. These next two kills will determine where the control goes. Spartan's got a, a little bit of a decision to make here. He decides to let them spawn again at B. He doesn't want to take an individual battle there, give numbers away. Not only does it mean they're going to keep scoring here, Sentinels, with the AC oh, hot, yeah. but also the rockets are coming up as well. But that grenade allows Chick to come in, grab the boom booms, and now all of a sudden, Quadrant are broken out of the hold. It was four dead. Lethal's your first spawner there, so that's a clean rocket crap. What a grenade! onto the tires, Jen, to make sure to win that. I'm not sure if the battle goes the same way if that grenade doesn't hit. And now you can see that they're already halfway up the map here, Quadrant. Sentinel's trying to force their way out. Chick playing perfectly with these rockets. He finds one. He might be able to thread the needle on two as well. Big damage being done, but Spartan is there to support his teammate. Wow, look at Chick's routing as well. Perfect really there on front seat. It covered every single one of his bases there as he moves across for the trash angle. And now, just like that, they continue scoring, and they've crossed the 200-point mark. And now they're going to try and collapse onto C as well. Chick has played this masterfully. He knows that Spartan is still alive, but he knows that Spartan is going to have to turn his attention because Chick is inside of C. It's going to be another triple cap here for Quadrant. Wow. Now Quadrant answering back. We questioned them. We wondered where their mentals would be at. That spike doesn't hit at all because it's a new spike. Oh. And now just like that, Peekaboo! Boo Boo doesn't check his corners there. Thought the spike might do it for him. Not enough. Not the new spikes. 241 and counting here for Quadrant. I mean, it could be uh, just a matter of moments here. If they can hold B, then Quadrant will go 2-1 to one up in the series. And their ridiculous, ridiculous record on strongholds will hold strong. 2-1 here to Quadrant. Wow, what a finish there. That's why I started to say there. Quadrant ended the game before I could even finish the sentence or the thought. But we question where their mentals might be at. After falling victim to a 50-49 win where they let a six-kill lead go, and my goodness, do they ever answer back. Let's not forget, they were getting outslayed and outscored 
early on in that game, a lot of teams would have folded in that moment. You've just lost a 50-49, which was a throwaway game. You're down by 40 and you're being outslayed. A lot of teams would fall victim to that much pressure. Quadrant did not. They answer back with about a 120 point hold consecutively. Then they turn that into a trip and a very, very strong late game performance to end the game with more than double the score of their opponents. There's uh, two moments in that game I want to kind of talk about a little bit. And first was the first Quadrant triple cap and how long that went on for and how they was able to just stifle the Sentinels. Series, and on the other the side of that, the when Sentinels got their that. triple cap, it was so quick for Quadrant to break out. They had a clear game plan on how they wanted to approach things. And that was the difference. Quadrant's triple cap, cost Sentinels about 100 points. Yeah. On the other side of things, it was about 40. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And the, the, the difference in the convincing level of those trip caps, I think, is, is quite a large delta. But look at that. That was the end of the play that we were talking about. Look at this from Chick. Ready? He's brilliant. He's going to rocket, get damage on the splash here for Top Commando. Nades front seat, so he cannot be challenged. That gets him all the way into Tram perfectly. Just a master class of movement and the way that he watched his own sight lines. That led to a double here in the back of Tram as well. And what essentially became the final trip cap in this play as well. Yeah, you can see the spike from Boo Boo. He didn't get any hit markers. He didn't know that Chick was in that corner. He was hoping the spike could do the reconnaissance work for him. But as you say, those spikes, not quite what they were. Not the new spikes. Spikes in 2023, just not the same, man. Not the same, man. Things have changed. Thank God. Uh, 250 <laughs> to 104, the final score of that game. A commanding win with Legend leading the way once again in the kills department here for Quadrant. 20 and 11 for him, a positive nine performance. But you have to say, everybody had their moments in that game for Quadrant. And I've got to say, if I'm Sentinels in that one, you're probably looking at that series layout at the start of a series and saying, hey, we know this game type is going to be tough, but the next one is where we can put pressure back onto Quadra. Yeah, that's really the opportunity here. CTF Argyle, honestly, I got to say, it's a fantastic game number four for this series because this has been an unbelievable series to start the tournament off. A back and forth, as you see, with the scores on the board here. But man, CTF Argyle just feels like the right game four for this series. Like, we're getting so much out of this matchup between these two teams. And now things are going to slow down just a bit. It's a big, big battle. I feel like we're going to like a Lord of the Rings sized epic <laughs> war here in game number four. A full 12 minutes of gameplay, you could think it could easily be the result, just a back and forth battle between these two. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating that we go from like one of the quickest game types that we yeah. have to arguably the slowest game type that we have with the way that the map is set up here on Argyle. And it's going to be down to the snipers. We always talk about it, and it's most importantly going to be down to that control of the camouflage as well. That is the one thing on this map that can create the openings for teams to break past the 50 yard. We see kind of a standoff, right? Kind of yeah. teams puffing their chest out and looking at each other, waiting for sni sniper picks before they try and move forward. But the camo is the one thing that can break a setup around the map, that can get you into your en enemy's flag without being detected. And that's where problems. Well, is there are players throughout history as well. Uh, Best Man is one of them. Uh, neighbor is one of them. Who exactly that? People will come up to me and, and they say, "Do you remember Char? They'll go, Do you remember Chicago they, 07? They bring it up like like everyone knows about it. Yeah, it's like, go, do you remember that battle P1? Literally, like game That's five against the, the, on the C station. Yeah, they'll go. They'll go. Oh, it was game two. These two teams, <laughs> Chicago 07. Okay, so this one, we we spawn. We go. I'm like, how on earth do you? <laughs> how on earth do you know that? Also, I think Lethal's got a memory like that too. But uh, <laughs> it's true. It, it's it's incredible to listen to just how well these players can recount these matches as we get ready to get into game number four. I'm ready. Everyone here is ready. Everyone at home is ready. It's time for us to get the action back underway here on the main stage. And it is going to be Quadrant. Still 2-1 up in the series. That hasn't changed for quite some time. But we'll have to see if Sentinels can win this game here on Argyle and send us to a game five. Or it'll be Quadrant who come out with the first win in pool play. And we've had such fantastic, fast-paced game times. As we said, Oddball Street, Slayer, Live Fire, Stronghold Street. It has been a non-stop, absolute slobber knocker of a series so far. But now things slow down just a bit. Argyle CTF, as we said, more methodic, more tactical. All you need potentially is just one flag on the board to take the win as we are now now into game number four, it's Quadrant up two to one. Oh, and I tell you what, Chick went for the grapple and did not get it immediately because he got absolutely melted by Sentinels who all lined it up. So the camo now going to be fiercely contested, but you would imagine it's going to be picked up here by Sentinels. And I'm pretty sure that it was Falcated who managed to get the first power up. Oh no, Seeker! Oh. Somehow they get it! Seeker sneaks it. It must have been off of a wild angle. He's going to be able to get that one in the end. And now they actually get the first kill as well. 3v3 on the map. Let's see. This is the exact moment we were talking about. Sika now has the camo, but this is not a guarantee. This is not a freebie. What play will Sika make here with the camo? Oh, he's going to get one. It's kind of donated to him as well. Boo Boo. He's going to be taken down. Go. Lethal. I think he just, I was going to say he just caught the top of his hair, but <laughs> bad time to use that sentence. <laughs> 
gets the tip of the head there, can't hide. That's better. Lethal with a crafty angle from the bottom. Of course, that scenario is one they've played, they would have played many times before, knowing that you can actually take down the commando player, even if they have a camel, from that exact angle with just a little bit of hitbox to play with. Spartan now, sniper rifle in hand. We're going to see all the sniper rifle users on this map as well. The sniper rifle enjoyers are going to be playing their life extremely slowly. We know that Argo is a map where Essentially, you are the anchor for your team when you have this sniper rifle. You're not going to see aggressive plays coming in. It's all about holding mid-map, and that, that is down to those lines of sight we were talking about. Legend's going to pick up one as well. Spartan has a chance to hit a nice flashy shot, but not going to happen, and Sentinels find themselves three dead. Okay, it's your last player alive, and here he is around the corner. Sika knows it, going to play this very carefully. He does very well to get that kill as well. And now with that three dead and essentially a fourth dead, eyes are now going to be on camo and snipers. Sniper coming up as well. You can see a uh, oh, flank coming in here from Booby Doo Boo, and it looks like Seeker just kind of got lost in the source a little bit there as his teammates, he was maybe expecting to do a little bit more damage than they did. Lethal trying to challenge. Lethal going to continue to challenge. Lethal going to challenge back though, and Falcated fancies a piece ooh, of this. Ooh, ooh. I said, like, Le Legend just stays alive when he shouldn't. <laughs> That's wow. another example. I love that from Legend because you could tell he wasn't pushing. A lot of players might have just held forward there and pushed all the way through mid, but he just uh, knew the grenades were going to be coming in. He knew that he might get double teamed. So he played that so well and just dances around the bullets and eventually lives to tell the tale as well. Oh, my shirt, he senses tingling. And that's when Chick has a sniper rifle in his hands because we know what he can do. And more importantly for the context of this game, SLG has got the next camera. That's two out of two here for Quadrant, but can they make more of an effect on the game with this second? SLG here on your screen, as you say. Known by the devoted followers as SLG. Jesus tries to go for the second one, can't hit. In the end, he will be taken down. That's the second camo neutralized of the game. Yeah, it's two for two. Nothing really to show for it from Quadrant. So a huge amount of praise has to be given to Sentinels here and how they have approached those situations. Wow. A stick coming oh, in and Boo Boo. Well, wait, wait. It's got to be, wow, the repulse. Uh, the rare scenario, I think the repulse uh, actually sent the sticky off of the wall for a split second and actually gave Boo Boo a suicide. Not something I don't think we've seen on the main stage specifically in that exact order. I think you've seen it all. And then something like that happens, but Spartan now in a position to maybe support his teammate who was running that flag momentarily. Seeker going to try and draw the attention away as Booby picks up another. Seeker now last alive as Legend falls off the map or is maybe sent off the map by a repulse. And defense is the name of the game here for Quadrant. Trying to hold fast here, but Smartan with that. Eee! Damage being done, might be able to get touched on this flag, but Quadrant have held pretty well here. Send the flag back home. Wow, perfect timing there from Legend. He's going to pick up that one, and now all eyes on top mid once again. As we said, a very different game type, as you could tell. If you happen to be new to competitive Halo, first of all, welcome. We thank you for checking out the HCS Major here in Arlington, hosted by Optic Gaming. It's been a great series so far, but just there we saw a little bit of a different game type. So, ooh, was going to get like, nice damage off of that one. Maybe even pick up another one here, as it's going to be too dead, though, for Sentinel, so he'll have to slow this down. But speaking of, very different game type here in number four. These two teams really in an all-out war for control. Next camel coming up. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting moment. He doesn't hit the shot. Chick stays alive, and Chick has to win this fight. Chick wins this fight, but Spartan off the respawn. You can see Booby just about bought enough time here. Spartan. He's going to be trying to send that flag back home, and that's a big defensive play coming in from Spartan there. Seeker gets the next camo. This time he's got a sniper to play with as well, so Seeker has the game in his hands. Three camos in a row for Quadrant. So that one looked good to me, and they finally will have to do a little bit of extra work to get the kill as well. As we said, it's amazing to be able to watch what these camo players can do. It might be a third one shut down, though, by Spartan. And they're letting these camos go, but they know exactly how to counter it each and every time. And like we talked about in the pregame, it's not easy to convert with the camo. Oh. You still need to make the right place. Well, let me tell you, SLG can be a little bit of a human highlight reel on this map as well. He's already picked up one, and he's got the sniper rifle now to play with. And you've seen it. I, we spoke to Snakebite after the last event. He was saying the French guys are some of the best Wee! in the world with this weapon in their hands. The reaction time is nuts, and I mentioned he's a highlight reel. Well, there you go. The flag is moving. Flag's moving, the French flick is hitting as well. That headshot connects and convincingly thinks about the fade away. Ooh. Body on Spartan now. Boo Boo bravely shows, and now SLG gonna now hold a new angle. Spartan's gonna tra track that one. Looks like a little bit of toes were spotted from SLG. No, he didn't know about it. He actually knows his oh, he knew right about there. it. Oh, Not he knew about happen. it, buddy. Don't worry about that. SLG finds his target. The flag is sent home, though. Chick in a position, however, maybe to get another one running. The SLG knows where Falcate is. He's hoping that Legend does as well, as he can continue on this little spree he's on with a sniper. Once again, new camo in 20 seconds. That one does not connect, so he's going to set his sights on the top vent. Falcate has to win this battle. 
and does well to get the damage that he needed as the camo's popping in 13. Two dead here for Quadrant Sentinels on the front foot. Chick, though, with a big defensive kill, and we've seen that a few times in this game so far, and that's what this game type can come down to. One defensive play has to be made to shut things down. Oh, Spartan boy. is moving that flag. Falcate gets the first camo here for Sentinels as well, and Quadrant, they couldn't do anything with it. The double kill coming in from Lethal, though. This is going to be the first flag going home. That's three dead legend here is your last player alive in the engine. He's going to hold no chance. Falcated with the trade and the double kill as well. This flag's guaranteed to go home. First time they get a camo. Well, it's a cap here for Sentinels. That is efficiency. Coming in from the team dressed in red on your main stage. And Spartan, having put that flag home, now has a sniper to play with. Took them six and a half minutes of play to get that cap in. They worked hard for it. They found themselves losing the first three camos. But it's really perfect timing. All the pieces of the puzzle coming together for the side of Sentinels. They get the flagpole at the same time as they get a kill and a camo grab, and they get the next two. Really nice work, as you say. Great efficiency from Sentinels. They lead 1-0. to zero. And now Spartan's job is just to hold strong. He just has to stop the pushes coming in. He has to hit some shots. A couple going to be missed, but his teammates have already picked up a few kills, and Legend will be taken down as well, you'd imagine. Lethal will pick that one up. Lethal Ooh, picks up a two as well. What's going so on down there? Now you can see why well, Lethal's getting grubby in the basement. Spartan's looking for some respawners. Do not leave Lethal unattended with players down there in the bottom engine. He picks up both of those kills off screen and looked like he was going to just fall victim to a 1v2. Instead, he comes out with both. And that just paves the way for Spartan to continue holding top mid. Ooh, tries to line one up there onto Chick, who was just coming off of a little push. And Chick gets a stick on his way forward. So now you're going to see Spartan transferring his attention. He picks up one. And Chick, you might have stuck someone a minute ago, but now you've got a few extra oh, seconds boy. to think about it. No! Spawn with the triple kill. That's a beautiful way to open the map up. Wow, you can tell he wanted it too. He just flies in. He's looking for the spawners. He goes bottom base, and guess what? He gets a present. Very happily sees the spawner. Flag run underway. Flag run is moving. As you say, efficiency. Been the name of the game here for Sentinels. Chick's trying to challenge. Chick will win another 1v1, but has Spawn bought enough time in that fight? to let Sentinels move this flag across the map. They're almost 50% of the way there. Chick, though, with another important defensive kill. Ooh, boo -boo with a nice little juke here. Sika, that nade's not going to connect. See if he can get the kill before the re comes in. Sika's actually going to push past. And Boo Boo now, so that flag is going to eventually come back there. Sika will grab that one, and now both flags back at home. Boo Boo's still alive here, and the engine might get pinched. Ooh, SLG. Somehow Sika's still alive, by the way. And you could see one thing that was impressive there from Seeker was the prioritization of the situation. Yeah. Knew that the flag had to be put home. SLG gave him the cover fire. But now Aye! SLG is going to have to have another sleep here as he gets folded up like a love letter. Look at this now. 324 left on the clock. This game's far from over. We have one on the board here for Sentinels. They had to work hard for it. Lethal with a big 1v1 to shut down the camo as well. And it's another counter from Sentinels against the camo. Spartan picks up another one as well. Three minutes left here. That was three dead for Quadrant. I mean, Quadrant can't get past Spartan at the moment. Every single time they're trying to push out, he is just hitting the body shot, hitting the head shot, and that's why he's currently sat at 16 and 10 oh. in this game. Make it 17. Don't do it. Oh, boy. Almost tees up another one on Chick. A positive seven for him. As you say, just holding the mid-map, controlling and patrolling, making sure that they maintain this one flag lead. 2.45 left on the clock. Two minutes 45, like you say, that's the number to worry about here for Quadrant, for Sentinels. That's the number to hope changes in your favor wow. very, very quickly. Another little quick scope there is going to be cleaned up by Boo Boo Doo Boo. And now Sentinels with Spartan set up and feeling as warm as he is with his sniper rifle at the moment. It's going to be tough for Quadrant to break. You can tell. Look at him just holding every angle and really not missing. Even if he doesn't catch a head, he's always catching the body shots. Another one as well on your screen. And just like that, continuing to hold. It's gone well for the last 30 seconds. 2.15 left. SLG going to challenge. SLG should know by now that you don't challenge Spartan when he's in this kind of form. It's a killing spree for him. The camo's coming up. And most importantly for Sentinels, it's another flag running. They already got this one into the base, I was going to say. But Seeker slows it down. It was too dead here for Sentinels. Camo was up. Spartan has not grabbed it just yet. It actually is going to drop off a vent instead of going for the grab. We'll have to see how this plays out for them. Now two dead for Quadrant. Well, Lethal's going to put it home, though. And Sentinels up by two. And this is their game type. This is a game type they've had a lot of success in throughout the Halo Championship Series. Of course, a new look lineup, but the piece is still slotting together extremely Oi. well as TJ, he has a little play with a sniper rifle as well and shows that he can get it done. And just like that, 2-0 to zero with 1.30 left. It's a very different final moments of this game here as this really should be a Sentinels win on the board. 124 left, and big, big points here for Sentinels as they get ready. You spoke it into existence, Mark. You said you wanted a game five. Hey. 
Right now it's teed up. Only a few more pushes left for Quadrant. Yeah, one minute 15 left on the uh, on the game clock. And you know, Dan was talking about the crazy Aquarius comeback that we saw from Quadrant, where it felt like they were out of it, and then two quick flags, they were back into it. The difference here is that it takes a lot longer to get the flag across the map here on Argyle. So one minute left on the clock. You would imagine this is pretty much done and dusted here for Sentinels. And you can see yourself up at home for a nice little game five. Yeah, we're getting ready for it here. Quadrant has about two pushes max left with the size of this map. If they want to try to get something on the board, the kills are traded out and they're going to need much more than that. You can tell SLG's actually flying through on the express train to the bottom of the base. He gets taken down and punished for that now. Essentially just about one push left total for the side of Quadrant, they're two dead. Yeah, this is this is game. You know, 30 seconds left. It's just not enough time to run two flags. It really is as simple as that. boo has got the sniper Dang. rifle! Woo! Boy, SLG. That's, oh! oh what? It's me, Boo-Boo. He's having a little bit of fun at the end of this game. Wow, Boo-Boo just taking his doo-boo and making sure everyone knows it. 10 seconds left in the game. Okay, that's going to be game, set, and match here. Quadrant find themselves losing this game 2-0. to zero. Sentinels find themselves saying, hey, we ain't done in this series yet. Look at and then after the long break, Andy, we're going to a game five. We indeed are, and Sentinels is ready for it. As I said, you spoke it into existence. I think everybody in the room and everyone at home wanted a game five anyway. It feels like this series was worthy of one, and really it couldn't be ended any other way. Yeah, I mean, we got to talk about Spartan in that game, right? The way that he was hitting those shots, the important shots as well. So impressive with that sniper rifle. And the, the thing on Argyle as well is it's, it's not the flashy shots a lot of the time. It's just making sure when you're falling away with half shields, you're getting the body shot. Yeah. You're making sure that player can't push, and Spartan did that so well. It was, it was tough to get across the map with him hitting shots like that. It's such a difference maker. If you even have your snipers hitting, say, 50% or higher body shot rate, you will have so much more possession of the map, so much more control throughout the entire game. Here's this play. Never mind, it's the, the, the beginning of the play. Sika eventually gets taken down with the camo, but that kind of was a really interesting representation of the early game, right? It was a lot of quadrant camos and a lot of stops coming in from the side of Sentinels. In the end, though, Sentinels, they hold on, they eventually get camos of their own, and they also time their camos even better with their flag runs. Yeah, I think the, the important thing to point out, like you, you were highlighting, was, you know, Quadrant did a great job at the start of the end to get the camos, but it was Sentinels almost doing a better job to spot yeah. them out immediately, yeah. right? It was no impact whatsoever. And as the flag was moving, you can see Falcate is just having the time of his life. He's got camo to play with. He goes in this situation, if I trade, it's fine, because there's plenty of time for my teammate to get that flag across the map and this is just a prime example of what we saw all game from Spartan right nothing flashy nothing crazy apart from this shot wow. here beautiful stuff from him beautiful triple kill not easily done and just the confidence also coming out of him there and just as we said it's a highlight reel just he continued on and he held the mid map so long here's the play against SLG SLG misses the melee to can't even get the trade in that scenario as well and it just felt like between lethal and Spartan man were they ever hitting shots and boo at the end as well oh I mean if you're SLG in that situation you're kind of like shooting across and you're like, I know a shot is coming. Yeah. And I hope it isn't a headshot. And, and it is. It is. <laughs> Not an easy way to go down. In the end, also Sentinels out slays 75 to 62. So Quadrant keeping it close in the slaying category. However, certainly not in terms of flags. It will be a 2-0 to zero decisive win on a game like Argyle for the side of Sentinels. And they will force a game number five. And now, speaking of Aquarius, we mentioned the flag game. That's where our game number five is going to be taking place. Now, this is a real test for both teams, because we talk about Aquarius Slayer, we talked about it for quite some time now as being a map that you, you're never really out of. You right. can feel like you are by being down by, say, 10, 12 kills. But you pick up a camo, you pick up a heat wave, that can be a big, big snowball effect. And you see teams making 15 kill runs without response, or barely a response, I should say. So I think even in the la latter moments of this game, if a team has a sizable lead, it's not done and dusted. And we certainly should have learned that lesson from game number two. And I'm sure the Quadrant and Sentinels will know it better than anyone. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to think about coming out of that game number two, which was an absolute nail biter, as you see by the score. But I would even say 50 49 doesn't even do it justice with how wild the end of that game was. However, in game number five, the ultimate test for Quadrant. Mark, how long have you and I talked about it? Now, for weeks, as we got ready for this event, we'll focus on game fives for Quadrant. If they want to be one of the best teams in the world and not just talked about as a major tournament threat but one of the top four and maybe a top three or higher contender they need to really focus up on these game fives gotta win a game five that's where the best teams in the world get it done look at phase last tournament right. game five game five game seven that was the difference maker for them being the last team to be stood on that stage lifting that trophy above their heads and 
But you're looking at the other side of the stage as well, and Central, they know it better than anyone. They know it 100% what you have to do in a game five. It doesn't matter what's happened in the previous games. If you're in a game five, it's all about closing the series out. And you mentioned this series layout as well and how it's been a real examination of like every facet of Halo for these teams. Well, now we go from a very slow-paced, power weapon orientated map of Argyle to the run and gun style of Aquarius where you've got the camo and the heat wave, but mostly you're relying on your battle rifle. You really are. And the thing is, if you look on paper, right, if you just think of the way the Quadrant plays, I think on paper Aquarius is a Quadrant game type, right? The fact that they can fly as fast as they do, they can deal so much damage, they can collapse before a team fully spawns in the back of the base, they can con continue to force things like split spawns. Quadrant on paper really should have the advantage here. The question is, Will Sentinels be able to play both at pace and maybe just catch Quadrant players off guard? When Quadrant's flying across the map, for example, maybe they're flying through a gen, maybe they're flying across top middle, can you just single out those players? If there's gaps in the setup, if there's gaps in the timing, Sentinels is going to be able to do it. The question is, can they execute here in game number five? I mean, what a beautiful series this, is, a series, excuse me, this has been so far, right? A game five to start it off. Back and forth, 50-49s, and we've just had the last two game types, you would argue blowouts on either side. Stronghold, you have to say a bit of a blowout on the side of Quadrant. And then we've just seen Argyle just completely controlled by Sentinels for 95% for of that game. And it just means that both teams have been tested to their limits yeah. so far in this series. And it's just the first series of pool play. Yeah. There's a lot more to come for both of these teams. And, you know, they're going to be tested against FaZe as well. I was going to say, we get to see both FaZe of away. Teams. Yeah. We get to see both of these teams play against FaZe yet, which is just going to be a fantastic way to start off the tournament here. And that's still only Friday, day one of three. So just so much to look forward to here at the HCS Major Arlington, hosted by Optic Gaming. As we said, also a packed open bracket as well. Sold out event in the room, and it's been fantastic so far. And this series has been a great way to kick it off. One game separating the results of these two teams, and you have to think, not only is there a lot riding with this series, however, the pool play trajectory of these teams, right? Neither of these teams want to drop a game here, right? Because as we said, they have phase to go up against yet, and it's not going to be easy. This will determine, you heard Quadrant talking about it. This is going to determine right, where their bracket goes, right? So I think there's a lot more than just this Game 5 win riding on this. You could see a lot of bracket being determined by which team takes this. Yeah, and it is, we saw how tight some of the pools were back, you know, the last event as well. It was... The, it was map difference that was how right. teams placed you know the records were very similar and it came down to those like, minute details of how your series had gone and the fact that we're going to a game five now means that you know the maps eh, it's not going to be a huge advantage for either of these teams as they move through the rest of pool play so this game five needs to be a win it's yeah. as simple as that you need to get the series win on the board if we do come down to something as tight as that when we get to the end of pool play so i mean game five is set up beautifully i feel at the moment and uh we said at the start of this series this is going to tell us a lot about where these two teams stack up well we're finding that out right now. Yeah, it really is, right? We talked about Quadrant. They have to have their sights set on much higher than top six if they want to make another historic run. Top six is no longer a surprise for this team. It has become an expectation. You look at Sentinels a lot riding on a, what was a pretty big set of team changes for them. They need to justify those team changes with the Game 5 win here. Also exciting to watch in this game is you're still going to have the same camo dynamic. However, it's obviously going to play out very differently here in this game type. If you're able to get kills on the board that lead to a camo, you should then be able to make a certain set of plays that will lead to another advantage. It's very different from your Argyle camo. When you get a camo with control on a map like Aquarius, it should certainly statistically convert into even more kills, even more control. The question will be, can the players step up when it's in their hands? Yeah, interesting to look at the stats we're seeing on our screen right now. Lethal versus Legend. Both players, completely different roles on their team. We should highlight here. Legend with a 1.24. He's the guy who's going to be going in, cleaning up the damage, hitting the big four shots in the 1v1s. Lethal on the other side is creating opportunities for the likes of Spartan and Falcated to do the best that they can to put their stats on the board. So. It all comes down to the final game of the series. It's a game five here in Arlington. It's Aquarius Slayer. Question is, who wants to win the series? That is the question. Who wants to win the series to take this momentum from pool play into the rest of their matches for the day? As you said, this one is a big one. Phase still yet to play these two teams. It could come down to tiebreakers as well and could determine, to be completely honest, the rest of the tournament for these two teams in terms of where they lie in the bracket for Saturday and Sunday. Only one map will separate Sentinels and Quadrant in this series. Camo going to be vital, absolutely pivotal for these teams and their success in this game as well.
And of course, it's going to be the last event that we see that camouflage, and we're going to have the uh, quantum translocator, which is something I'm going to struggle to say. <laughs> I'm very but impressed. I'm going to be calling it a port. All right, everybody, that's as simple as that. But that's going to be obviously coming into the rotation as well as we move forward. But Camo is going to maybe have his last goodbye, his swan song, as we head into a game five here between Sentinels and Quadrant, the perfect way to kick off the Friday here in Arlington. So much pressure on both of these two teams. A back and forth series with neither of them. Wanting to be the one that falls here in the end. Boo Boo with your first camo on screen. I mean, probably the most iconic camo player in Halo has got it right now. Spartan picks up the first kill of the game. And here comes the flank now from Boo Boo Doo Boo. But it's going to be an exchange of kills at the start of this game. 2-2 two to two is the score. And Boo Boo finding no targets to find at the moment, which means that that camo is going to start to burn away. Watcher are going to be very happy with this. They lose the first camo and they actually come away with the lead. Ooh, Boo Boo just misses that jump as well. And every second that goes past without Boo Boo having an influence on the map, it's going to be a good moment for Quadrant. Camo is out. Boo Boo taken down. And Quadrant, you have to say, with a 6-3 to three lead, have played that pretty damn well. They've played it so well. Unbelievable. They lose the Camo in a clean 4v4. Legend picks up another one. The trade will come in. However, to be 7-4 when you lost that first Camo, that's pretty unbelievable. What a start here for Quadrant. Yeah, great start from Legend as well. And I really wanted to highlight him as a player to watch in this Game 5 as well. He's sat at 1.24 KD across this series. He needs to reproduce that in a Game 5. And we'll have to see if they can keep that pressure up. Big Damage wow. coming in from SLG. Gets the trade with the thrust as well. And here comes the shark in the water. Legend looking again to clean up the pieces. You can tell he's just reacting to call-outs here as he rotates all the way back to watch that P1 angle. Make sure that Chick gets back as well. Look at the damage coming in here as well. Great angles. And now he's going to try to stay alive with the thrust. He has a little bit of help here on the pink oh, side. Oh, a lot of help coming in on the pink side. A double kill for Legend. The thrust getting him out of that situation as well. As we were almost seeing Quadrant double up. But keep in mind what we talked about, Andy. Keep in mind people at home who are watching. Big swings happen here on Aquarius, and by no way are Sentinels out of this. Look at the collapsing, though. They know the P1 kills are there. They're prioritizing it well. Heat wave is in play. Still a five kill lead, but they're going to need to do that. What we just saw on screen time and time again if they want to close out the game here. Still a five kill lead. You can see Legend, not only has he got the heat wave, he's got the thrust as well, and that means he knows he's got power. He can make the play for his team. Chick picking up one in the kill feed as well is going to give a five kill advantage here to Quadrant, and now that is the sign for Legend to go hunting. Gonna poke around corners here. A little bit of call outs, a little bit of info coming in the straight stairs nades. Somehow stays alive. Now just a four kill lead. Lethal though, camo in hand. Let's see what he could do. Two for two here for Sentinels. Spartan picks up a double kill as well, and now it's a two kill game. Remember what I said just a few moments ago? Oh. That's the difference between the two teams. It can disappear in just an instant here on Aquarius, as Lethal still has this camo to play with. And if he can find that heat wave that was dropped, then maybe he's got a chance to cause some problems. Yeah, camo out there, it dissipates just in time because he had two plasmas, which would have been pretty devastating to fly into a base. Oh. He's going to get the second one as well. It will be traded out. However, another great effort from Lethal will bring the game within one. One kill between the two teams. Spartan going to be trying to challenge. Boo Boo flying from the skies. Good shots coming in from Legend, but not as good as the teamwork yeah. that came in from Sentinels in that situation. It's all tied up, everyone. It's 17 to 17. Nothing between the two teams. Oh, look at the shots here. Might even get the second one from Valkate. Oh, oh Valkate in a 1v2. Wins the battle there. Both players. All three players, one shot, excuse me, wins the 1v2 against both of them to keep the game tied. The very definition of no shields, no problem coming in from Falcated there. Fade away for that second headshot. But all it means is that Sentinels are tied up. Fal's going to get a lot of info, though, for his team now. As he gets some good damage down on the players from Quadrant trying to flush through that gen. Kills being exchanged, 21 to 22. It's a one kill advantage, make it two, as Quadrant come out better on this. Spartan was your last player alive here on the high gen. He gets taken down off of great teamwork coming out of Quadrant. That will maintain a three kill lead here as they found themselves three dead on the side of Sen. And what can Quadrant do here? Will they continue up? Camo popping now. Camo's so important here for Quadrant. Same can be said for Sentinels, of course. But Sentinels on the back foot, trying to lane the player who might be thinking about moving towards that Camo pickup. Damage being done, but Falcated gets that first pick. Here comes Lethal now. He'll pick up another. 2v2 on the map. Falcated last alive, though. And he gets one. So where's the rest of Quadrant? Have they got the camo? The answer is yes. Seeker has the first power-up for Quadrant to use. Falcated was in a 1v2 there. He does get one of the kills. However, Sika gets away with the camo, not spotted out yet. Sika decides it's time to pull the trigger and a perfect kill to start things over. Now a five kill lead still, oh, but he gets caught out. out. He's been spotted out and it's Falcated again who is clutching up for the squad. Keeping this game close. Six kills the difference though. 
This is a situation that Sentinels have found themselves in already once in this match. Can Quadrant make the most of it this time, though? Sika knew exactly what he was doing. Even though we saw him die from his POV, they picked up two more kills off of that. Sika knew where he needed to be to get the damage, to allow the separation, to create the separation! Chick actually looks away for a second that allows the trade to come in. Yeah, he thought he had that kill. He thought Lethal was dead to rights. Instead, it ends up in a trade, and it's a four-kill game now. One team wipe away for Sentinels to tie this game up. SLG trying to break out of the closet here for them. Trapped inside of the gen at the moment. Shock. Shocks, excuse me, going to do enough damage to maybe give it a little bit of information, but maybe not as much as they did previously. Legend now going to try and get the kill onto Lethal, gets the trade at least. It's the 2v2 on the map. You can tell he had his eyes on the trade there. Things slowed down yet again. This is the home stretch. We finally crossed that 30 mark, and as we've said many times before, this is really where a Slayer will start. Just three kills separating the two. Plenty of time still to play with. 20 seconds until the camouflage is back on the map as well. It's two to one in pickups. So far in the favor of Sentinels, and it's two dead here for Quadrant. And Seeker's got to think about staying alive instead of that camo. For now, Lethal's going to push him out. And all of a sudden, it's a tie game here with six minutes left on the clock. Sentinels actually goes in the lead for just a second, but things are tied up yet again here. Neck and neck. They will get the next kill yet again. And the camo as well. This is big. Spartan with the game in his hands. Can he convert with the camouflage? One kill advantage here for Sentinels. The first time we've seen them in the lead for quite some time in this game. Decides to use that sidekick to get some damage down. Does have two thrusts to play with as well as the camo here, but SLG with that kill is going to force Spartan to play his life. He's going to have the Dynamo's thrust camo. The question is, is he going to try to make a play with this that drops down? You have to think he was trying to go top car there, and they will now lose a lead by one. Chick trying to take his individual battles. Spartan's going to move in to clean it up. Legend has no idea that Spartan's wow. there as well. Falcade, he'll get the kill, and all of a sudden, Sentinels go into a lead. It's a two-kill one. It's a slender one, but another kill from Lethal is going to give them a little bit of breathing room. Love the patience for Spartan there. You might have thought he's not doing enough, but at, right at the end of the camo, it was perfectly timed. He didn't panic. He didn't get greedy. Instead, he now gives them a sizable lead, but just like that, killing spree on your screen for Spartan. However, it's still just a two-kill game. Two-kill game. You saw Quadrant picked up a couple. However, the Dynamos were enough to keep Spartan alive there. Just keep Legend in a position where he couldn't challenge. Legend, though, finally does get challenged. The damage came in. Seeker trying to clean up the kill, but Spartan is taking over again here. He's 14 and 10 in this game five. It's an unbelievable run, but still just a one kill game. Still has two plasmas and two thrust to play with. He's got help in the back of the base. That one will come in easy. And now a two kill lead, make it a three kill lead at 44 to 41. Now Sentinels, you get the feeling they're not going to let this one slip. It's a double kill for Spartan as he is taking over, like I said, 16 and 10 at this point. Looking to make it wow. 17. Falcator clears it up. It's 46 to 42. This is an unbelievable run. What a privilege to watch this from Spartans POV. They only need four kills, and he is just on an absolute tear here. Yeah, he's full of confidence at the moment, Spartan. He's going to add another one. Falcator steals it away. It's three to go now for Sentinels to close out the series. Make him look way too easy. Spartan just dealing so much damage across the map. He can't be stopped. 48 to 43, 49 43. I mean, the man's a walking turret at this point. It's one to go here for Sentinels. All they need to do is find one quadrant player to take down, and the series is going to be theirs. And Spartan does it! Spartan does it! With a killing frenzy on your screen, and he has the right to pop off at the end of the series. What a way to finish it. Spartan goes 18 to 10 in a game that they win by seven. What a difference, right? Let's, I mean, quadrant game two. Couldn't get it done. They had that same lead. Spartan showing experience, showing how you get it done in a game five, in a tight game when you have that advantage. Like you say, the medal that pops up, the killing frenzy that comes in, and Sentinels will win your first game on the main stage. And that man on your screen, boy, did he look comfortable doing it. He looked good. The Sentinels fans in the room also liking what they see. Killing frenzy to end the game there. And what a way to do it. 50 to 43 is your final score, 18 and 10 from Spartan. Putting the team on his back, and I think you put it perfectly. The man looked like a turret. And what a way, after you talked about coming off of that last tournament, a lot of disappointment on the side of the team. You heard it right directly from Spartan. And they are convinced that they've made the right changes and committed also to making sure that they have a very different result here. Yeah, and you, you can see, uh, I think we're going to get to speak Spartan in a minute, which is very good. But on the other side of the stage for Quadrant, that is a reality check, right? That is a wake-up call that everybody now has knows that they've got a target on their back. Quadrant have a target on their back, and they know that every series is going to be a rough one right, for them right. going through this. 
one kill away from a 3-0. Let's not forget. If, yeah. that's, if that's not a 50-49, that's a 3-0 quadrant win, and this series ended a long time ago. Instead, is a 3-2 win in favor of Sentinels. Very, very interesting stuff in that series. It's Sentinels who come out on top, and you can see who we're going to speak to, and it's only right that we're going to go down to the main stage with Blaze to speak to Spartan, because what a perfect way to end a game five from him.